Alrighty guys, here we go. For the top. Okay? Uh, in red pen, for the top. Let me get this nice and large for you. Don't overlook the obvious. Anything times what is the same anything? One. One. It's just, a, if you said root one, I'll take it as well, because technically that's one. One or root one, I will take there. Okay? Three root two times root two, that's three times two, which is six. Then here, any radical times itself is just the number on the inside. What I want you to do here is start with two points and take a half point away for what they got wrong. So basically, if they got all three wrong, they still get a half a point. Okay? They get a half a point. Okay, they, if, if they got one wrong, it's... They took two, okay, we're only starting with two points. So it's plus one. Okay, guys, not, not really that hard. Watch. Start with two points. For every one they get wrong, take a half point away. Okay, I'm changing the grading here because I had a couple students just totally crash and burn that first one. I'm trying to be generous here. Okay? All right. At the bottom, you have two graphing problems. I'm going to change this to y equals mx plus b, so that's negative 2y equals negative 6x plus 10. And then we divide by negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. We end up with y equals positive 3x minus 5. So I start at negative 5. My rise is 3. My run is 1. It's going to go upwards, left to right. So 1, 2, 3, over 1. Or I could even go down 3 and over 1 this way. doesn't matter. Either way, my line, like so. That is y equals 3x minus 5. That is plus 2 points. If they have anything wrong with it, it's minus 2. Because you have to start doing all or nothing in graphing. Graphing's got to be something you nail down. Yes? Guys, guys, real simple. If it goes through negative 5, and if you count the slope out, 1, 2, 3 over 1, and the slope is 3 over 1, you're fine. Okay? 6 over 2 reduces to 3 over 1. Same thing. Okay, x equals 8. This is all the points where there's an 8 there and something there. So how do you graph it? We just graph a bunch of points. 8, 0, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 4, 8, 5. x equals 8 is a line which is vertical at A. That's worth one point, all or nothing. Top's worth two, bottom's worth three. Score out of five and return. They get something wrong if they showed them how to do it.
really need to carve out some time, 10 minutes, see me face to face, I will cure you of drafting a version. Okay? But it's got to be nailed down. Okay? All right. Today, we are going to talk about three basic things. And I'm going to have the three basic things. Write this anywhere on your notes so you can keep track of what's going on here. Okay? Three basic things. We're all dealing with logic. Logic. Three. No, anywhere. I don't care where. Okay? Just, just on the top. You have a nice big margin at the top. Put these three things here, and then we're going to cross them out as we do this, okay? All right. We're going we're to learn about something called conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction, disjunction. Put this anywhere. Big margin top notes. Conjunction, disjunction. Conjunction, disjunction. Next thing we're going to talk about is inductive and deductive. You watched the videos last night? That should be putting bells off your ears. Conductive and deductive. Last one, just write laws. We're going to do laws of logic. We're going to cover two laws of logic. time, but I didn't make it. Okay, ready? As we, ca as we get over these, I'm going to cross them out. Okay, this is all, all of this is still talking about reasoning. All of this is under the umbrella of reasoning skills. Reasoning skills. All right. Complete my sentence. Conjunction. Right, so I'm learning about it. Conjunction function. What's your function? Ring a bell? No? No, you watch Full House Rock when they were kids. Okay. A conjunction. A conjunction is simply an and statement. This is going to feel a little bit more like an English class. Let's get our symbols down. We already figured these out. P, Q, and R are just phrases. Remember? Just phrase. If you, if you don't need to write that down, you don't have to if you remember that. Little arrow, remember, means conditional. So the most important are the last two symbols for today. And the little carrot is and. The little D thing is or. The little carrot is and, and the D thing is or. An and statement is a conjunction. Con means together or with. Junction means to join. And join things together. Okay? Or contrast things. Therefore, we call it a disjunction. A disjunction. So a conjunction is an and statement. A disjunction is an or statement. Write it down if that doesn't make sense to you. Are we okay so far? Fancy name and or conjunction disjunction. Okay? Alrighty. Do I have any two sports people in here? Raise your hand. You're a two sports person. Two sports. Two sports. Kevin, what two sports do you involve? What's that? Football and wrestling. Okay. I need to say he's in football and wrestling. Listen carefully to my statement. If I say this, Kevin is in football and wrestling. Only when both components are true. A conjunction is true right here. Conjunction is true only if both parts are true. He's in football and wrestling. That's only true if he's in both sports. Okay? Both sports. 
So a conjunction is true, just write only if, dot, 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 only if. A conjunction is true only if. So there's only one instance in which it's true. Okay. Raise your hand if you're again a two quart person. Two quarts, two quarts, two quarts. Okay, there's five of you. We've got to use two quarts this one. Football and wrestling. Anybody wrestling? Football and wrestling. Okay, if I say this, if I say follow is in football or soccer. is when both are false. So a disjunction is false only if both are false. So false only if. in your groups. Each person do those two sentences out loud in your teams. Go. No, no, no. These guys. These guys. These guys. A conjunction's true when? Disjunction's false when? Go. Read it out loud. Okay. When you're done, turn the page. I want every person to say that out loud. Make sure they actually read it out loud. Okay, now we're gonna test your understanding of this. Okay, I'm gonna do one of these problems with you and then you're gonna do five on your own. Let me make this really big here. I'm going to do problem number six with you. Okay, it's really big. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Is that 200? 200. There it is. Okay, take a look right here. Okay, notice all the symbols. Okay, do not be overwhelmed by the symbols. Okay, let's see what we start with. We're told P is false. So put a little P and put an F by it. We're given P is false. Whatever the P statement is, it's false. Guys, just take the very first page, flip it over. Did I lose anybody? Okay. I'm on number six. And Q, I'll change colors, Q is also given as false. So write that right above it. Did I lose anybody by doing that? Okay. Now, let's come down here. Q, right here. See this Q here? This, we are told, is false. So write a false. This symbol, and or or, and, and then we have a parenthesis, so put the parenthesis there. There's P, and that's plain old P, so that's false. And then that's an or, good. And then we have an opposite of Q. Now, don't be put off by this. If Q's false, what's the opposite of being false? First and last class, it, just, it took them three rounds to get that. Okay, so you're all brilliant, fabulous. Okay, now let's break this down. Let's do the parentheses. This is an or statement. Get that? Whoop. Uh, redo. Okay, so if I have a false and a true with an or, the whole statement, is it still true or is the whole false? True. Okay, this is true. Remember, an or statement is only false if both are false. Did I lose anybody? Get that parentheses? Now let's pull that down. It's kind of like a math problem. Now we have an and. Okay? 
Now here's the last one. A conjunction is only true if what? Both are true. Are both statements true here? No. Then this whole statement, the bottom line in, this whole statement is false. You see that? This is called truth value. You want to analyze the entire statement and prove it to yourself. Okay? Do a rest backtrack and notice I did the most complex one with you. The others are a piece of cake. You have seven minutes. Do all of them. Work with the team. I'm going to come around and help as necessary. I'll be right there, Charles. Okay. I'll come around. If you want to do one with me personally, I'll come. Just a moment. I'm going to help. Which one, Marika, do you need help with? Number one. Okay. You see, you see P is true? What's opposite of P? False. So it says, I got a false statement. Okay. Is that and or or? And. And, what's, and then opposite Q, what's opposite of Q? Q. So I've got a false and true. A conjunction of true is only when what?
All right, do you have them all done? If you need to, check and correct. Check and correct. Yes. Okay, number four. Okay, you end up with an or statement. Okay, B is false, C is true. So underneath that, true or false. Watch. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll show you. Okay, watch carefully. This, this in the parentheses, we have a false or true, correct? And then we have an or and a Q again, which is true. Okay? It's a P. It's a false. Okay, this is true because it's only false when both are false. So I have a true or false. So it's true or true. Remember, a disjunction is only false when, yeah. Okay, guys, I want you once again in your teams, every person, I want you to say these two sentences out loud. Go. Okay, so here's our list. Here's our list. We just did conjunction and disjunction. We're done with that. We're one third down. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Never. Okay. Now the second one. Again, you already hear this. Re all, the, all of the stuff you experience in daily life. I'm just taking stuff you experience in daily life and. Okay, have a seat. Have a seat. So let's see. 22 out of 28 eight of you right now are wearing jeans. So that is 79% at this moment are wearing jeans. Okay, I'm doing a little observation here. I'm doing a little experiment. Okay, I'm observing. Say the word observe. Okay, go like this. Put your hands out. Say, take in observation. Past week. Do I seriously have some anti jeans people here? Look at that mess. Nelson, you're wearing jeans right now, so stand. You're standing. In, oh, my God, you're going and running. You guys sound like you're old ladies when you do that. Okay, doesn't get so funny. You've honestly not worn jeans in the past week. Yeah, you wear jeans all the time. You've not worn jeans in the past week. Yes. You're old. So I've got one, two, three, four. Have a seat. Okay. So we have four. We have 24 out of 28 of you. Okay. You're going to mess with my statistics because it's usually 100% around the last time. But we'll work with it here. Okay, guys. So that's a very high statistic. If I broaden this to the entire school, that second statistic will probably be close to 99. Okay. You will have your one rebel who just wears short skirts with minus 30 or from Minnesota or something. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken in observation, and let's say those percentages are really high. I come to a general conclusion. General conclusion. 
if you're a teen, then you wear jeans. Yes, there's exception to the rules, but it's a general conclusion. We want what they do, even though my percent aren't the highest. Okay? So I take in information, and I have what's called an aha moment. Aha! If you're a teen, then you wear jeans. Go like this. Go like this. Take in. Go aha! Okay, that's called aha moment. That aha moment is a truth, a general truth. A general truth. Okay? Now, if I take that general truth and I come to someone, okay, now I'm going to come to my non gene double here, which I'm going to pretend is my non gene double, and I go like this. I go, Cameron is a teen. In my mind, I have the truth. If you're a teen, then you wear jeans. Okay, I look, I see he's not wearing jeans right now. Well, could I safely assume if he's a teen, he wears jeans? He has a pair of jeans. second time you take the general principle, it was Cameron, right? Okay, good. I'm still working on it. So if you're a teen, then you wear jeans. Then I go, Cameron's a teen. Cameron is a teen. Then he wears jeans at some point. Not today, obviously. Okay. So now what I've done here night's video in just a moment. Put your arms out in front of you. We're going to do this. We're going to do three, three little arm things here. Ready? Say, take in. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Say, aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Now point to somebody. Okay? Uh -huh. that, that, shows, that shows two different kinds of reasonings. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you take in observations, observations, and you discover a truth, a general truth, a general, okay, if you discover truth, I took in the observations, most of you wear jeans, therefore if you're a teen, you wear jeans. I had an aha, okay? Now, if that's called inductive reasoning. Write the word in. Did you notice I emphasize take in observations? That's going to help you remember that, okay? Now, if I take that truth, if I start with the aha, and I apply to a specific situation, that's called deductive reasoning. That's what the finger pointing was. You point to something specific. Inductive, take in, aha, deductive, aha, you, specifically. That's the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. Okay? I want you each to take 20 seconds and in your own words explain what is the difference between inductive or deductive reasoning. This also goes in the last night's video. If you want to use the vocabulary from last night's video, go for it. Okay? Each of you take 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> so. Don't all say the same thing. Change it up a little bit. This is what I'd like you to do. I want you, as a team, as a team. Okay, guys. I want, take turns. I want each, I want your people, 
to read aloud and switch the person who reads aloud, read aloud these three problems. Then, for this last one, you actually have to come up with the next terms. And then I want you to determine what kind of reasoning is being used, either inductive or deductive. Be prepared to defend yourself. Which means if, I, if you give me an answer, you better give me a because. Because I don't want you reading my face when you give me answers. You go like this, deductive, and then you wait for my reaction. And you're like, no, 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 inductive, okay? Learn to defend yourself, okay? All right, you guys got, look at the clock. You've got seven minutes to read and determine inductive or deductive. No. I want these read aloud, please. Read aloud. Yes, make sure they're all read aloud. Yeah, you can. I was going to cue you. Let's see. Abby, we talked about. Audrey. Audrey, 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 where are you? Uh, Blue Video Guide. Where is it again? It is? Can you go find it, please? Real quick. Ethan. Where are you? Ethan, 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 Ethan. Where's your Blue Video Guide? I need it, please. Okay. Frankie. Where are you? Frankie, Frankie. Wait, he's right there. Oh, he just went to the bathroom. I'll ask him when he comes back. Okay.
Yes, I do. Oh. All righty, guys, have a seat. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. That's the next day, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're ahead of the game. Have a seat. All right. Because I'm putting you on the hot seat, I will go ahead and take volunteers because I want an answer and I want to hear your defense. So I'll take a volunteer for the first one. Claire, what do you think? Professor Jang knows blue stars, yada, yada, discovers what, yada, yada. What do you think? What's that? Deductive. Deductive. Why? Uh, because he knows that um, he can basically say he knows that blue stars are higher than other stars. Uh -huh. So therefore, he's not thinking of the blue stars. Nice, nice defense. He took an aha and applied it. Now, I did try to mess you up because I used the word discover here. Okay, I did that on purpose to really make you think because I use discover truth for inductive. But you ask yourself, did he start with a truth, yes or no? Okay, did you, you see the word knows? Watch the word no. See the word no? He starts with a truth in his brain. Blue stars are hotter than yellow stars. He sees a star and concludes what it is. This is deductive. How many of you got that right? Deductive. Nice job. Nice job. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. Now don't be scared off. Who wants to take a second one? Go ahead, Sabrina. What do you think? Why? You believe. Nice job. I see the one like like the whole physical thing. Yes. He observed and then came to a truth. So it's inductive. Nice job. I'll take this one in two pieces. Uh, first, I want the next three in the sequence, and tell me uh, how to do it. Mr. Lang, yes. Okay, so the next three are the second one. Yep. 34, uh -huh. 35. 21, 34, 55. What's the rule going there? What do you observe? Okay, Th now this is off, off topic. This was in the videos. Anybody know what this is? A sequence is very famous. It actually has a name. I'll let you look it up. Something, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on there. I'll let you look it up. It has a name. Okay, who wants to raise your hand and tell us whether it's inductive or deductive going across this way? Raise your hand. Is that inductive or deductive? Define those three terms. sequence. Raise your hand. I want you to defend yourself. Tell me which and why. Um, inductive because uh, because the teacher tests you on a mental pattern, but this one is inductive. It, it teaches. They, they, they like you do like get tested. Yes, it is inductive. Well, but I, I'm fishing for a little bit more. Yes. Oh, I sent the video to her. You had the video? Oh, what is it? The Ganache sequence, kudos to actually reading the transcript, which I take the time to copy for you. Okay, it's inductive because did you have to observe something to figure it out? Okay, that, that was the clue. Inductive. You had to observe. You had to observe. Okay? All right. I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. Either one person must either define conjunction and disjunction, and then your partner must define what is the difference between inductive and deductive. Once you each do that, sorry, I've got my teacher's shorts on. Once you do that, you may wander around. You've got two minutes.
sometimes I check him, player, and then I don't write him down. Let me see that I. Ch okay, I do have it. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So if you, there we go. Let's get the number in there so you don't freak out. Yes, sir. Um, how many points is that, Alex? If you turn in tomorrow, how many it's, points? It's ten percent. It's worth it. It only takes a half an hour, guys. magician, our illusionist, really made an emphasis to really be careful with your emotions, because your emotions can be fooled with. Your emotions can be manipulated, okay? That, that, that full, what we do, what do, I mean, for goodness sake, the kid just has a paper tossed over his head, and he actually thinks it's disappearing, okay? And we're all giggling in the background, and he was such a good sport not to be embarrassed that we're all giggling, and he's still playing along, but it just shows you that Harris yesterday was a master at deception. He was a master at manipulation, okay? Laws of logic are important because if we get in the debate, the philosophical debate, laws of logic govern that debate. And uh, if you get used to these laws of logic, you can listen to even things like political debates and you can find holes in their logic. And if there's holes in your logic, change don't work. So it's important that you know the basics of rules of logic. There's two of them that we're going to learn today. They have fancy names, law detachment, law syllogism. Don't be put off by the names. You already know these, okay? Let me start with a simple one, okay? Here we go. Law of detachment says this. Is if you have a true conditional. So write if P, then Q. Remember, that's a conditional. If P then Q. And then circle it and write the word. We're going to say if you're given, the whole thing is true. So if you're given, a conditional is true. And you're told P alone is true. Okay, I keep wanting to do my U's as W's. That doesn't work quite. 
Don't, don't mind me. I just can't write today. There we go. If P alone is true, then it's safe to say that Q alone is true. So it goes like this. Okay? Here's a conditional. If you're a ballet student, then you have a crazy busy life. Okay, let's say that's a true statement, no matter what, absolutely positively true, which is pretty much it. If I'm a ballet student, then I have a crazy busy life. And I say this, you're a ballet student. That's the piece. What's the other? You have a crazy busy life. Okay, that's how that goes. Don't be too much into this. If we start with a true conditional, if P then Q is true, P alone is true, Q alone is true. Did I lose anybody in that process? Feel free to raise your hand. Okay, now the second one, you're also experts of this already. Okay, listen, two hands. Okay, ready? Here we go. Say this after me. If you get a job, if you get a job then you make money. Then you make money. Okay, shift your hand so that your left hand's over the money. Say, if I make money, I can buy, what do you want to buy? Car. 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 Okay, let's say car. Okay, let's, let's play green here. Then I can buy a Corvette. Say, make money, make money. buy a Corvette. Buy a okay, Corvette. now let's go back here. Remember, back here, if job, if job. make money. If job. Shift, if make money, if make money. Buy, a buy a Corvette. So we can connect. What? If I get a job, then I can buy a Corvette. That is syllogism. That is a syllogism. It, 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 we connect. We connect. So it goes like this. If P, then Q, the whole thing true. If P, then Q, whole thing true. If P, then Q, whole thing true. And that's the if you get a job, you make money. And if Q, then R, that's the third. That whole thing is true. If Q then R. If Q make money, then you can buy a Corvette. Okay? Now, I want you to circle P and draw a line, and you can connect now to what? R. R. Because you have the connector Q in the middle. Then, if P, then R. That's if you get a job, then you can buy a Corvette. Let's summarize these real quick here. Summarize. We're going to summarize. Because you need this whole page practically memorized to be able to function today. Law detachment says this. If P, then Q, true. If P then Q is true, then P by itself is true, Q by itself is true. That's law of detachment. You can detach those and they're still true. Law of detachment. You can detach those and they're still true. Next one, syllogism. If P then Q is true and Q then R is true, you can connect Q to R. That's called syllogism. Syllogism, nice fancy word. Next time you hear a syllogism, it says stand and repeat. Just really stay in this for a minute. Stand and repeat in our coaching. We will stay like like this. If you get good grades, you get good successful, whatever. So you hear syllogisms all the time. Next time, say it out loud. Oh, that's a syllogism. And, you know, the teacher is saying things all over. 
and you're trying to stop the whole thinking process. This will be fun. Try it sometimes. I dare someone in the next eight months to spot someone in the syllogism and actually call them out on it. Syllogism. S Y L L O G I S M. No, not it. You should do stuff just because it's discovery and fun, not because I'm always tossing bones at you with extra credit, okay? Contrapositive. Contrapositive. This was also true. We learned this yesterday. If, if P, then Q is true, if P, then Q is true, then the, the switch and negate is the only one that's forced to be true. We learned that last class. Opposite Q, then opposite P is also true. Contra positive has to be true. Okay, I'd like you, when you're done with this, I'd like you to just skip page six, go to page seven. Wait, was that the final item? Oh, th this was the example. If you drive a Mustang GTS and you drive a car, the contrapositive is if you don't drive a car, then you don't drive a Mustang. That shows the contrapositive is true. Take a look on page seven. Page seven. Page seven. Page seven. Okay. All right. I'm going to do seven with you, and then you are going to do eight and nine on your own. When you finish eight and nine, you come up to the board with a red pen and you check them. Okay, then I will give you permission. Um, after eight and nine, you're going to do, after you check it, you're going to skip page ten, and you're going to do page... 11 and 12. 11 and 12 actually go together. Okay? So, let me do, I'm on page 7. See the little baby 7 up there? Okay. We are given that these two statements are true. Okay? So, watch what we have here. If the star player is sitting on the bench, then a timeout has been called on the field. We're going to say star player is going to be our P. Then timeout has been called. We're going to call that Q. We're told that's true. So we're at least starting with that is true. Next one. If a timeout has been called, what letter are we giving that? Timeout. Timeout. Q. Here's Q. If a timeout's been called in the field, then fans get restless. Fans is a third, so we're going to call that R. You okay? All right. Now, we're going to make a list of what must be true. Let's start with what's given as true. We're told if P, then Q is true, and if Q, then R, we're told is true. That's just given. Okay? Now, you flip the page, but if you have your green page in front of you, you can still see what also can be true in this situation. You use the letters. Raise your hand and use the vocabulary of those letters. What also must be true in this case? P to R, that's syllogism. So I'm going to go like this. P to R connects. So P to R, because uh, it's syllogism, I'm just going to write syllo. What else must be true? Okay, so what's that called? We, we, we switch and negate. Contrapositive. So what, what would be the contrapositive of this guy? Switch and negate. Switch and negate. Opposite Q, then opposite P. That's the contra of the first one. Okay, there's one more. Yeah, opposite R, then opposite Q. That's also the contra of the second one. Now, there's your list of truths. There is your list of truths. Everything else must be false. Okay, don't read too much into this. Let me show you how to do these. So we're going to come here. So it says right here, star player sitting on the bench. Star player sitting on the bench. That's just P. Are you told P by itself is true, yes or no? No, are you told P by itself is true, yes or no? You hear the tone of my voice, guys. I'm asking you to ask me to read my voice here. Do you see P by itself is true? Yes. Well, those of you for saying yes, thank you for sticking to your guns. But technically, this is false. 
because P alone not given is true. Not true. Star player seen on bench, plans get restless. What letter is star player? Star player's P. Restless fans, what's that? That's R. So let's look up here. Do we have a P then R? Okay, yep. And guess what? That's syllogism. So this is true, and we write syllogism. I'll do one. Uh, yeah, if I, use, if I use an abbreviation, you can use an abbreviation. Okay, let's try the next one, and then you'll be on your own. I'll take the training wheels off. Fans not get restless. Not. That's, which one is that? Opposite of? Opposite of R. So this is opposite of R. Then timeout has not been called. Opposite Q. Opposite R, opposite Q. Look on your list. Is it there? It's a contra. So I go here. I say, oh, it is true. Why? Because it's the contra positive. You do four and five right now on your own. I'll give you the answers in just a second. Thank you. 